In this video, I'm going to cover the thyroid gland and how your body regulates it, what causes thyroid disease, what your thyroid levels should be, and finally, I'll discuss how to optimize those levels quickly. So let's dive in. 20 million Americans suffer from some form of thyroid disease. That's a population the size of the five largest cities in America combined. And women are eight times more likely to have thyroid problems than men. The most common of these thyroid issues is an underactive thyroid. Here's something that I see every single day. Someone who wants to lose weight and thinks it's their thyroid that must be off. But my doctor checks it and it's within range, she says. But in the course of this workup, this patient who is middle-aged, depressed, can't think, also can't sleep, has no energy, is more irritable with otherwise inconsequential stuff, losing their hair, having memory lapses, has poor circulation with cold feet, and often fungal toenails, these folks most likely have some issues, subtle or otherwise, with their thyroid. Most of them have Googled and already suspect it. Thyroid is a hormone produced by a small butterfly-shaped gland located in the front of your neck. This gland releases hormones that play a major role in metabolism, heart rate, body weight, muscle strength, cholesterol, and so much more. When this gland is underperforming, it's called hypothyroidism. When the gland pumps out too much, it's called hyperthyroidism. You'll know if this is the case if you have symptoms of agitation, weight loss, rapid heart rate, poor sleep, jittery, and generally just jazzed up metabolism. The thyroid gland absorbs iodine from the foods you eat to make two hormones, triiodothyroidine, T3, and thyroxine, T4. A normal thyroid gland produces about 80% T4 and about 20% of T3. However, T3 is the most metabolically active hormone and possesses about four times the hormone strength of T4. A tiny gland inside the brain, called a pituitary gland, is what regulates this balance between T3 and T4. If the pituitary senses the balance is off, it will increase or decrease a hormone called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. Think of the gland as a furnace, and the pituitary gland as the thermostat. When T3 levels are low, the pituitary gland releases more TSH to tell the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid. When T3 and T4 levels are high in the blood, the pituitary gland reduces the TSH production to tell the thyroid gland to produce less thyroid hormone. So when this delicate balance act doesn't work correctly, your body can have too much or too little T3 and T4, and this leads to some pretty serious health problems and the symptoms we covered already. Hypothyroidism too low thyroid can be caused by thyroiditis, which is an inflammation of the gland, postpartum thyroiditis, which is a temporary condition that happens in about 5 to 10 percent of women after childbirth, iodine deficiency, and a non-functioning thyroid gland from birth. Hyperthyroidism, or too much thyroid, can be caused by nodules, growth of abnormal tissue in the gland, excessive iodine, sometimes caused by medications, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a painless autoimmune condition where the body cells attack the thyroid, and Graves' disease, also an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland. These two, Hashimoto's and Graves, begin with inflammation of the gland causing a dramatic increase in thyroid release, but as the gland burns out, the patient becomes hypothyroid. During the visit, I do a physical exam to look for signs of thyroid condition, this will entail gently feeling your thyroid to make sure there are no nodules or goiter, which are these in irregular growths on the thyroid gland. I'll also look for other outward signs of thyroid dysfunction, but ultimately, we need to see your blood labs to get a better idea. What your thyroid glands should be? The most conventional doctors only test TSH. However, TSH is a poor marker of thyroid function. TSH should always be reviewed in the context of the other thyroid labs, especially given that your TSH lab could result in the normal range despite having low thyroid function. But for a complete picture of my patient's thyroid health, I test for free T3, free T4, and thyroid antibodies. Positive thyroid antibodies may indicate an autoimmune disorder such as Graves' disease or Hashimoto's that we talked about a minute ago. By optimal functional medicine standards, 
TSH should fall between 0.4 and 2.5. Free T3 should fall between 3 and 4.2. Free T4 should fall between 1.1 and 1.6. Thyroid peroxidase antibodies, TPOs, should be somewhere less than 9. Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin antibody, TSI, should be less than 1.75. Antithyroglobulin antibody or anti-TG should be less than four. If it is determined that you have an underactive thyroid, I'll put the patient on a thyroid replacement medication to help optimize those levels. Thyroid replacement medications fall into two categories, natural and synthetic thyroid, and they each have benefits and disadvantages. Natural thyroid medications such as NP thyroid, Echo thyroid, and Armor thyroid are derived from desiccated porcine or bovine thyroid glands and contain both T3 and T4. Synthetic thyroid medications like Synthroid and Levothyroxine only contain T4 thyroid, but for the thyroid to give its maximum punch, it must be converted by the body to T3. This requires an enzyme in your body that pulls an iodine off of T4 to make the much more potent T3, and this requires two metals, zinc and selenium. However, even with this, the ability to convert T4 and T3 declines as we age, which is why you'll see many old people that have all the symptoms of hypo or low thyroid, but their doctor had tested for TSH, their thyroid stimulating hormone, and these levels were normal because the gland is still making the T4. It just can't convert T4 to T3. The gland then will stop the pituitary from producing the TSH, so everything looks like it's working fine, but there's no T3. As you know, it's TSH that stimulates the thyroid gland to pump out thyroid when those levels fall. But if the T4, which comes from the thyroid gland, is normal, the TSH will look like it's nice and low. So the doc will say, hey, your thyroid gland looks normal. It's all in range. Well, sir, your test results are back and it looks like your thyroid is normal. Nothing is wrong with you. Doc, I feel like absolute hell. I'm pretty sure my thyroid is messed up. I don't think so. I checked your TSH and your results are just fine. I'm pretty sure this is all in your head. That's my confident medical advice. So you checked my TSH. But did you check my free T3, my free T4, and my thyroid antibodies? Well, no, because your TSH should really tell me everything I need to know about your thyroid function. Okay, it appears that I've misjudged your abilities. Look, it's not me, it's you. Have a good day. But wait, I just saw this new drug commercial about your low libido. If that doc had measured free T3, he would have noticed that this patient indeed lacked the ability to deiodinate T4 to T3, and that patient has, for all intents and purposes, low thyroid, because they cannot convert to the more potent T3 form. Thyroid hormone vasodilates the arteries. It can open wide the pipes to get more blood and oxygen to the heart muscle, feet, ischemic wounds, and can even add to treatment of PAD. I see it every day in my rehab hospital patients. Well, it's actually estimated to be over 25% of the population. And over age 60, it's much more. But since no one ever measures T3, it's impossible to really lock down the statistic. Age, then, is a risk factor for low T3. But there are a number of other things that also block T4 to T3 conversion. There are medications, nonspecific beta blockers, for example, like propranolol and metoprolol. Also, bad livers, bad kidneys, stress, poor gut health all contribute to poor T4 to T3 conversion. Some docs will add cytomel or T3, lyothyronine, a synthetic T3 in addition to the synthroid or levothyroxine to mimic a natural thyroid hormone combo. It's important to know though that too much T3 can contribute to osteoporosis and other undesirable side effects. Low levels of T3 can cause atrial fibrillation, but so can T3 levels that are too high. In these cases, natural thyroid medication may be the preferred choice as it contains other forms of thyroid that aren't present in the synthetic version and lowers the possibility of getting too much T3. 
Well, there are many biochemical processes that can only be accomplished with T3. Bone formation involves not T4, but T3, which combines to vitamin D, K2, and A to form a heterodimer to crank up the bone DNA to produce bone. And only T3 can get into the brain to stimulate neurogenesis, the spawning of new brain cells for stem cells. In 2020, Chow Lin and fellow researchers wrote a paper entitled Dual Effects of Thyroid Hormone on Neurons and Neurogenesis in Traumatic Brain Injury. They found that T3 reduced neural death in traumatic brain injuries and promoted the elimination of damaged mitochondria and cells, clearing the debris. Not only that, they found that T3 promoted neurogenesis, the formation of new brain cells from stem cells, and by enhancing the crosstalk between mature neurons and neural stem cells after traumatic brain injury. In other words, T3 starts a conversation between the already mature neurons and these newbie stem cells that says effectively, okay little ones, time to grow up. And not only that, T3 treatment enhances the differentiation of these new baby neurons into specific types of mature neurons to integrate into the info processing network of the brain to repair the damage. T4 does not do that. So with strokes and with dementia, which by the way, happen mostly in old people, and following traumatic brain injury and accidents, degenerative brain diseases like MS, Lou Gehrig's, Parkinson's, all depend on T3 to assist in cleaning up debris, rebuilding and repair. These are old people diseases. Many doctors and insurance companies have no idea the role that T3 thyroid has in neurologic restoration. I find so many of my patients admitted to the rehab hospital without even TSH being tested and almost never a free T3. It's so critical to every aspect of cell biology and biochemistry. Suffice to say, I'm convinced that more medical problems could be ameliorated by careful management of thyroid. It's underappreciated and underutilized in almost every patient care scenario. And if I had one piece of advice for physicians, it would be to check not a thyroid panel, but TSH, free T4, and free T3 levels in every patient. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms we covered in this video and you're unsure of the cause, it's always a good idea to have a blood panel ordered by your doctor so you can address all these underlying issues. See you next time.